Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. Please excuse me if my voice sounds a little bit croaky. I've had this like cold virusy thing and still just trying to get over it. So I've got a bit of a husky voice at the moment. Um, but I'm back today with a favourites video for you. I don't tend to do like monthly favourites at the moment. Might be something I might do in the future, but at the moment it's not. Um, just because I tend to not get around to it. Um, but I do keep a little list on my phone of just things that I have been enjoying and when I kind of get a decent list, I do a current favourites video. So I thought that's what I would do today. Um, I've got a bit like beauty, fashion, TV, uh, some foodie bits. So it's quite like a mixture of different things. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna get started because I've got quite a few things. So I'm starting off with beauty. And let me find the first thing because it's just fallen on the floor. Um, so yeah, my first favorite is the Dr. Poor Poor Original Balm. Um, I, I'm trying to think if this is the first one I've had. I think this is the first time I've used it. I can't remember if I got it in like a beauty box or something. Um, and yeah, for a while I didn't use it. And then, it must have been like before Christmas, I had quite a sore nose. And I kind of looked at this and it said that basically you can use it for lips, skin, cuticles and beauty finishing. So I was like, I'll give it a go. So I put it on my nose and it really helped and ever since then I've been using it mainly for like a lip balm and it's been like reasonably cold it's warmed up a bit now actually but sort of over the winter I've been using it and I haven't really had any trouble with like cracked sore lips or anything um so yeah I would definitely recommend it um I don't think it's particularly expensive and it's not got like a fragrance or anything, although I think they do do different ones, but this yellow one hasn't got any kind of fragrance. Um, and it just says, apply a small amount of Dr. Paul Paul Balm to provide relief for dry, irritated skin, moisturized lips, nails, cuticles, dry cracked skin, such as hands, heels, and elbows. Don't leave home without it. Um, I tend to just use it at night. I haven't really needed to use it during the day. Um, but yeah, I've been really enjoying using it and I think I might have to repurchase it once it's, because it's kind of, well, it's nearly empty now. So yeah, might have to buy some more because it's definitely seen, well, seeing me through the winter and I can imagine even over, like over the summer it'll be quite useful as well. So that is my first favourite. My next favourite, I haven't actually got a thing to show you, um, but it is the Kath Kidson hand cream and they do so many different ones. Um, I've often had them as like gifts. They come in little sets of like three or something. Um, all sorts of like different scents and flavors and all that kind of thing. Um, and I remember when I first got given some and I kind of thought, oh, it's not, probably not gonna be very good because it's, I, I don't know, I sometimes find like with sort of fashion brands when they do sort of like beauty things and stuff that they're not the best. Um, so I'll be honest, I didn't have like massively high expectations of it. Um, but then I started using it as like a daily hand cream. And the formula, I really like the formula. It's quite a thick formula, um, but it absorbs like really easily. And it just seems to work for me. They have lots of nice, nice like different fragrances and stuff, but they're not like too strong. They're very like subtle and yeah, I just find it a really, really good hand cream and I was pleasantly surprised by, yeah, the like quality of it and yeah, how good it is. So yeah, I would definitely recommend the Kath Kids and hand creams. And as I said, there's so many different ones you can choose from and you don't need a huge amount, like a little goes a long way. And I have found it quite, because it's quite a sort of thick hand cream, it's been quite good for like the colder months because it really seems to like, moisturize and nourish and I mean I use it all year round anyway to be honest but um I have found it to be like just as good as some you know like specific beauty brands so yeah definitely would recommend the Kath Kidson hand cream my next favorite has been the origins make a difference plus rejuvenating treatment lotion it comes in this bottle and as you can see it's empty because I liked it so much that I've used the whole thing um, 
I think I got it, I bought something else and there was like a deal where you could get it, I I'm not sure if it was free but there was like a pack that you could get with like different bits in and this was one of them and I wasn't actually 100% sure like what it was because it's called a treatment lotion and I wasn't, yeah, didn't quite know what it was so I kind of looked it up a bit and did a bit of research and I basically started using it as a toner, I mean it says this pre-moisturising treatment lotion fortified with rose of Jericho plus a breakthrough lychee and watermelon complex prepares skin for the intensive treatments to follow. Pat on clean skin with a cotton pad or, pad or fingertips, AM and PM. So I basically used it after I'd cleansed and then popped a bit on a cotton pad and just like swept it over my face. And I really, really liked it. It had a nice scent. It made my skin feel quite sort of like fresh and glowy and clean and it just seemed to be a nice way of like preparing my skin for like putting like the serum and the moisturiser and stuff on. Um, I would actually, yeah I would quite like to repurchase this again. Um, it's not like the cheapest, like Orange Origins is sort of, I don't know, maybe like a, I'd say like a mid to high range sort of price point. Um, but the stuff that they do and the stuff that I've used has always been really nice um, and it lasted me quite a long time because you didn't need much on like a cotton pad to put over your face um, but yeah I really really liked it and again would really recommend it I'll try and do some close-ups of stuff so that you can actually see it properly and I will link what I can in the description bar below so that if you want to like check it out you can just click the link and it will take you there um, but yeah I was pleasantly surprised by this one and I'm kind of I always like look through the Origins website and they have so many nice things because I also use the um, under eye it's like a rollerball thing and I've used a couple of other little like samples and stuff before and as I said there's nothing that I've used that I haven't enjoyed using so yeah I'm quite tempted by pretty much everything on their website but yeah definitely would recommend giving this one a try. My next beauty favourite and I've actually done a blog post about this which I will link in the description bar is the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentrate. Um, I got this quite a while ago and still have so much left because you barely need any, you literally have like, f I think I use four drops, rub it into my hands and then just like rub it in, massage it into my face. Um, I was a little bit like nervous about using an oil because I kind of thought oh is it going to make my skin feel like really greasy and horrible but it really honestly doesn't, it absorbs really really quickly. I love the smell. I mean, this is for an e like for evening use because it's like obviously midnight recovery. It's for overnight, and it's got like a really nice like lavender, very very like relaxing scent. So it's really nice. You like rub it in your hands and then just smell it and like while you're rubbing it on your face just before bed, and it's nice because you can kind of smell it as you're falling asleep. Um, and yeah, I find I think it helps my skin feel and look a lot nicer like in the morning it seems to kind of make it feel quite glowy and quite moisturized and I'm really enjoying using it it's not cheap it's not like because I had been looking at sort of other like overnight oil type things which were a lot more expensive so this is the 50 mil and it was 49.50 but I will say as I said before like it is lasting me a long time so although it's quite expensive to begin with, it's gonna like see through. I mean, this I've been going on this for months and I've still got absolutely loads left. So it kind of hopefully works out not as expensive as it sounds. Um, but yeah, I really, really like it. You, I don't know what else I can say about it. Um, I'm not good yet. Yeah, I won't read the whole back of it because I've always been here all day, but I've kind of explained it a lot more in my blog post. Um, and again, Kiehl's is another brand where I've tried a few bits and I've had a few samples and really enjoyed like their products. I really liked like when I went into the store to buy it, the um, staff were all in like white sort of medical coats and it's all very like sciencey in there. Um, but they were really, really helpful. They like helped work out like 
what my skin needed and they showed me lots of different products that might help but they weren't like pushy about trying to like sell me stuff you know they I knew that I wanted this and then they gave me samples of other things to try as well um but yeah they were really really helpful so if you have a Kiehl's near you or you have, like a counter near you I would definitely just go and like chat to them and see what they can offer you because I found them really 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 helpful and I'm loving using this something that I am gradually converting like pretty much my whole family to is the O'Keeffe's Working Hands Hand Cream. Um, I found like the last few years when the colder weather comes around my hands have started to get a lot more like dry and cracked and sore um, and I think I'm probably taking after my mum because she has the same problem and I've tried various different like moisturisers over the years and nothing has really like helped it when they've got that bad um, and so a while back I think I asked on Facebook or something I can't remember like if anyone had any recommendations for something that ha helped like really really like dry cracked hands and this like got continuously recommended by various people um, so I thought okay I'll pick myself some up I got it off Amazon but you can get it in Boots and Superdrug and all sorts of places um, and yeah I was like not really convinced but I've been using it pretty much every day over the winter and my hands have been so much better like that I haven't had much problem with them like cracking or feeling too dry um so yeah it's been I would say a miracle cream to be honest my mum um I don't think she's using it regularly enough to notice a difference and we've also given some to my sister because she works outside with horses um and again I'm not sure how regularly they're using it but like when they do use it they said they found it quite helpful um it's like quite a sort of hard I wouldn't say it's like a gel but it's like quite a hard cream um you only need like a really small amount the first few times I used it like I got out like a big old blob of like cream and started rubbing it in and like I was just absolutely covered in this cream so you honestly you literally need like a tiny amount like half or a quarter of what you would normally use um, a little goes a long way and it absorbs into your hands quite quickly they do feel a little bit greasy sometimes um, I think it depends how much I use but I tend to use it at night so it doesn't really bother me to be honest um, and yeah it's not expensive and it's going to last a while because you don't need that much and so far touch wood it's been really good so yeah if you have trouble with like dry cracked hands I would definitely recommend it they also do um, I think one for like feet and they also do a lip balm which I'm quite interested to try just to see like what it's like um, but yeah I'm definitely converted to the hand cream the next beauty favourite is a perfume and I'm quite I think I am quite fussy with perfumes actually. I'm very specific in what I like. I quite like fruity fragrances and I like um, sort of sweet fragrances. Um, but I got sent this just like a sample, free sample. I can't even remember where it came from. Um, whether I picked it up in a store or whether it came in the post, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was a free sample. And it is the Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel Eau de, Par Eau de Parfum Intense. And the first time I smelled it, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. Like, it's not the type of perfume that I normally go to. Um, but I have, like, continued to use it. And now every time I wear it, I get compliments on, like, what I'm, like, people ask, like, oh, what perfume are you wearing? Or they'll say, like, your perfume smells really nice. And, yeah, it's definitely grown on me. Um, it's a much more, like, mature scent, I think, than what I tend to go for. But I really like it. I tend to wear it more on, like, special occasions. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. It says Coco Mademoiselle, but then inside it says Coco Forever. So I'm not sure... I think it's called Coco Mademoiselle and that's just something else but um, yeah I really like it and I am adding it to my wish list because I'm kind of running low on this one now and it's not going to last much longer um, but I think it would be quite a nice sort of like special occasion perfume 
Um, I can imagine it being like a really nice like wedding perfume or something. Not that I need that yet. Um, but yeah, so that's like the good thing. I, I swear I like like free samples of like perfumes and things because you tend to try things that you wouldn't normally like go for in the shop. Um, so yeah, I've discovered a new perfume which I'm quite happy about. And then my last beauty favourite is the Charlotte Tilbury Colour Chameleon Colour Morphing Eyeshadow Pencil and I have got it in Champagne Diamonds. I think this is recommended for blue eyes but obviously you can wear it whatever colour eyes you've got. Um, and basically it's just a crayon really, an eyeshadow crayon. Um, so just comes like that. I think you twist it if you want like more. And I'll be honest, like I'm not the best makeup person. Um, you know, I can just about work out like the whole like foundation, concealer, eyebrows, mascara type thing. Eyeshadows, I'm just, I wish I was better. Like I wish I could like blend and work it all out, but I'm just not very good. Um, so when I got this, I, I don't know, it just like, made life so much easier because you just literally like colour it on and kind of blend it out a bit and you're done. It goes on really really nicely, it's like a lovely like well champagne-y glittery colour so it's perfect you can like wear it daytime, nighttime, whatever. I have got it on today but there's no way you're gonna see it um because I'm too far away. Um But yeah it's just for me it's perfect because it's easy to put on, it doesn't need a lot of like blending or anything and it's sparkly which I love um so yeah I'm kind of really tempted because they do all, like other colors and stuff as well so I'm kind of tempted to try and like save up and get some more colors because just because of how easy it is to to put on and how easy it is to wear um so yeah this is like maybe my first step into like doing my eyeshadow properly i'll have to start watching some eyeshadow like makeup tutorials on uh, youtube and see if i can kind of get my head around the whole like doing your eyeshadow a bit better <laughs> um but yeah this this is definitely i would recommend it to anybody to be honest Okay, so moving on to a couple of fashion favourites. My first fashion favourite is the jumper that I am currently wearing. Um, if I kind of stand up a bit, you might have seen it in my weekly vlogs. But basically, it is from Matalan. I don't think it's on their website anymore. I got it before Christmas, but I've only recently started wearing it because it came with a security tag on. Um, but when I went into Matalan a couple of weeks ago, they did still have quite a few of them in the sale so they might still have them in store um but yeah basically it's just a knitted jumper it's high necked but not it's not like a roll neck it just kind of comes i can't remember what the word like name is for it um and then it's got sort of various patterns and sort of pink and blue and it's really cozy really warm it was so nice like when we had the snow like having this on and just like snuggling up um and quite like inexpensive as well. I had never really like shopped in Matalan before, but I saw it on the Matalan TV advert and I just sort of thought, oh, I really like that jumper. So ended up buying that and also a couple of other bits and bobs as well. Um, but yeah, I am pretty much, well, I'm wearing it a lot now and yeah, I'm glad, glad I got the security tag taken off because it was sat on, it was like hanging on my wardrobe for ages and I just really wanted to wear it. So I'm quite happy that I can actually wear it now. And then my other fashion favourite is something that I bought last week. So it's fairly recent. Um, it is from Oasis and it is just a grey sweater that says no rain, no... And then it's got a picture of a rainbow on it. It is the softest like material I think I've ever felt. And it's like really like furry inside. It's lovely. Um, I'm very much into like rainbow colours, just colour in general at the moment. I think because it's like dark and horrible and grey outside, it, I just am gravitating more towards anything that's got a bit of colour in it. And I saw this on the website and immediately kind of thought, oh, I need that. Um, this was, I don't know if there's a price on it. Oh, it was £32. 
I got it in a medium. I'm normally a size like around about size 12 and it fits fine. It's quite a thin sweater um, but it is quite warm so I think it's going to be good for like going into the spring um, and at the moment actually to be honest like it's like cold but not too cold and I think this will kind of keep me reasonably warm um, and I would say actually like fashion with regards to fashion like just Oasis in general has been another, another favourite recently I haven't bought anything from Oasis for quite a long time and then I saw a friend wearing a dress and asked her where it was from because I really liked it and she said it was from Oasis so I started having a look on their website and um, you can like add things to your favourites on their website and say so my favourites is currently rather large. I did buy a couple of other bits um, which I think I showed in my weekly vlog and I might take some pictures and stuff as well um, but yeah they've got so much nice stuff in at the moment and it's kind of I'd say it's a little bit more expensive than New Look but the quality of the things that I bought are really really good um, so yeah I'm kind of I keep like flicking through now and seeing what like new stuff they've got in and they've got so many lovely like bright colours and patterns and just some really really nice clothes so yeah if you're looking for like spring clothes definitely check out the Oasis website. Okay now onto a few food slash drink favourites and my first one is a tea obviously if you know me or if you've watched my vlogs you will know that I am quite obsessed with teas um, and this one I must have got it before Christmas now but I am still very much obsessed with it. It is the Yorkshire Tea Biscuit Brew pretty much everyone is talking about this so if you haven't heard of it I'd be quite surprised um, but basically it's like normal tea but it's meant to taste like you have dunked your biscuits in it and I kind of I get that like I I think I gave some to my sister-in-law and I was like guess what the tea is and she was like it smells like biscuits and I was like yep um, I really like it it's like a really like comforting like I don't know just to like proper good tea. I mean I love Yorkshire tea anyway. Um, my dad's side of the family are all from Yorkshire so I'm quite, uh, I love Yorkshire anyway. Um, but the biscuit brew, yeah, I just, I love it. I just think it's one of those things you can drink and it just makes you feel like someone is giving you like a lovely warm hug. Um, and I mean I would say that it means you don't have to have biscuits with your tea but I quite like a biscuit with tea anyway so but yeah it definitely I can definitely taste the sort of biscuity part to it I think they've actually changed the packaging now um but they do still sell it um and oh it just smells so good I'm gonna have to have a cup of this later because yeah this is making me really want some now um but yeah I would definitely definitely if you're a tea like addict like me and you haven't tried this definitely give it a try. The next thing I feel is a little bit random um, but then that's me all over. Um, I go through these like phases of like really really liking something and having it like every day um, and over the years there's been all sorts of different things but recently I have been slightly addicted to lemon curd. Um, it started because my uncle's partner um, over Christmas gave each of our like families um, some homemade lemon curd that she had made and I pretty much ended up eating the whole jar of it to myself I think <laughs> um, and since then I've just been obsessed with it so I mean her, her homemade lemon curd was amazing it was so good um, so I said to my mum, I was like, when I was getting near the bottom of the tin, uh, of the jar, I was like, mum, I need some more lemon curd. Um, uh, so we bought this one, which is the Waitrose One Lemon Curd. Um, it does taste, it doesn't taste quite the same as a homemade one. Obviously it's going to be different, but this one's really nice as well. Um, and I think it has got little bits of lemon zest in it as well, which I think just, I think makes it quite nice. Um, 
so yeah I'm slightly obsessed with lemon curd I know they also do I think they also do an orange curd which I'd be quite interested to try and I remember like years ago we went to a National Trust place and in their shop they had like loads of different flavoured curds so they had like black currant and passion fruit and stuff so I think we're going to a National Trust place on Tuesday so I am going to have to have a look in the shop and see if it's something that they still do because yeah I'm just I'm obsessed with curd now which I don't know it's a real I think it's an awful word like curd it makes it sound really gross but it is really good I just put it on like on toast or like on some nice like bread or something and yeah I'm happy and then my last food favorite and you're gonna have to excuse me for my pronunciation because I'm not sure how you say it but it is le le buchen le buchen I don't know um basically I think it's something that only really comes out at Christmas and we bought several different bags this year from different places and I'm sort of slowly making my way through them um basically I mean this one says it's brown gingerbread glazed and partially coated with dark chocolate you can get like different shapes different um like some of them have different coatings and stuff like that but they're basically these sort of like spiced biscuits with um like icing or chocolate or something on them and they are just really tasty if anyone can tell me how you pronounce it i would be really grateful um because at the moment i just kind of make it up um they i think are german these are made it says these are made in germany anyway um and yeah i'm just obsessed like every christmas it's like one of the first things that i look for in the supermarkets because oh yeah as i say i have never been able to find it outside of the christmas season so we tend to stock up so that i can like be eating it for a while afterwards um but yeah they are so moorish and with a cup of that like biscuit tea like i'm away seriously um so yeah i kind of feel bad putting this in my favorites because i don't think you can buy it at the moment but you know if you can remember until like december like definitely give it a try because seriously I think you well I'm obsessed with it and yeah I just love it <laughs> okay I'm now moving on to TV and film um I haven't seen a huge amount of films recently but one that I have seen which I really really enjoyed was Mary Poppins Returns um I mean anyone that knows me knows I'm a massive Disney fan anyway so I was quite excited when I saw that it was coming out there's always a little bit of a worry when you do like a sequel or um you know like a second or third or fourth however many um film in a series that it's not going to be as good as the first and especially with such a classic like mary poppins i was like i tried to go in with an open mind because i kind of thought i need to see this as a separate film from the first one because i just don't think anything would live up to the first one but yeah the second film I really loved it. I loved the actors in it, the children were brilliant, I loved the music, I liked the way um, it did what the first film did and it went into sort of cartoon for parts of it. Um, they didn't really have, I don't think they had any of the songs from the first one in the second one but there were parts where there'd be like little bits of music where you'd hear like bits of the music that were in the first one so there was like little links um and probably one of my favorite bits was um having dick van dyke in it just because he was such an iconic like part of the first one having him in the second film as well was just yeah it was just brilliant um and also the balloon ladies and angela lanesborough or something at the end um it was really nice like seeing her in it as well um i don't want to kind of give away too much if you haven't seen it i don't think i've given away too much um but i would just say go and see it go with an open mind of it being like a separate film um and i think i well yeah i've heard most people say they've enjoyed it i've heard a few people like who haven't enjoyed it as much but i loved it i it was like classic classic disney good like feel good film um i came out like singing the songs and yeah i'm just excited for it to come out on dvd 
The next um, TV favourite, was it was out quite a while ago now, but it was a series called Keeping Faith. I think it was on BBC One. I don't know whether it's still on iPlayer because it has been a while since I watched it. Um, but basically it was about a couple. Um, the lady from the couple was, I can't remember her name, but she was in Torchwood, I think. Um, and basically her husband goes missing and all these kind of things start to unravel about his life and like while they're trying to find him she um you know she starts to get questioned by the police and all these kind of secrets start coming out and you start to learn more about him and her and the family and all these kind of things and it's just this I really really like enjoy it. it's quite like a gritty sort of mystery drama which is the kind of thing that I absolutely love um, so yeah if it is still on iPlayer I would definitely like recommend it if you like that kind of thing um, I really like like the scenery and stuff in it as well it was I can't remember where they shot it but it looked really pretty um, and yeah I would just I really really enjoyed it Another favourite is Death in Paradise. I have loved Death in Paradise since the first series, basically. Um, and it just, it just never gets old. I, it, they've been through like, I don't know, three or four detectives now, and each one of them has been like really good in their own way. Um, it's set in the Caribbean, and it's like beautiful scenery. Like every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, I'd love to go there. Although I do then think, like there seem to be a hell of a lot of murders on this island so I'm not sure um, but yeah basically it's like a good old murder mystery um, it's not sort of like particularly gruesome or anything like that um, which is quite nice it's a very like family I would say family friendly obviously not like young young children but um, we my whole family enjoys watching it um, but there's a lot of like humour in it and like lightheartedness as well and music and just yeah I love it Death in Paradise I would happily watch like the old series over and over again um and it's just fun like watching it every week like we start watching it like with the family and we all like try and work out like who's gonna get murdered and then once they've been murdered we're thinking like okay who's the like who's gonna be the killer and it's just a really nice easy watch um, but well, kind of one that gets you thinking of it as well. Another murder mystery type programme that I've been really loving, as you can tell I'm a bit of a murder mystery kind of fan, um, is Vera. Again, I have watched Vera for, oh, I can't even remember, like since the beginning pretty much. And again, it's not a particularly sort of like gruesome, like it's not like a sort of silent witness type program um there is a little bit more like gruesomey stuff but not like it's not unwatchable like my dad manages to watch it and he's not into that kind of stuff so um but yeah i just i love brenda Bre brenda bleth i can't even say her name brenda blethin um she plays vera and she's just brilliant she's funny she's down to earth she doesn't give two hoots about what anyone else thinks of her she's a very like independent woman and set up north which i love um and again you're just you know you're watching it the each episode is like two hours long so it's a proper like feature length like thing each time um and again you just start watching it and you're trying to work out like you know who's the murderer some of the episodes can get quite complex you really do have to concentrate sometimes because we'll get like halfway through and me and my dad will be like what's happening and then it all starts to like make sense again um but yeah it's another one that i just i really love and it's a good one to watch on like a sunday afternoon or something when it's cold and rainy outside you can just like snuggle up on the sofa and like get into a proper good like murder mystery drama and then a couple of things that I have been enjoying watching on Netflix. So the first one is Designated Survivor. I kind of started watching it by accident because my dad started watching it and then I was in the room and ended up kind of getting hooked. Um, 
it's a sort of American political drama, which I don't know, might sound a bit dull, but actually it's quite interesting. Like if you've ever watched Homeland, it's a similar idea to that, but not quite as, I don't know, I'd say Homeland is a little bit more gritty than Designated Survivor. Basically it's about um, a, Somewhat, this guy becomes president like kind of by accident he didn't really choose to be the president but it happens and it's just about his life as he's become president and all these different issues that come up with like like terrorists and plots to overthrow him and all these different kinds of things and yeah I just ended up getting a bit addicted to it you you kind of I think the first series I would say is better than the second and certainly in the second series, there were uh, there were episodes where I kind of thought, like, how much longer is this going on for? Or that was a bit of a duff episode, but then it would like pick up again and I'd get back into it. Um, so yeah, I'd say if you liked Homeland, I would give it a try because I think it's quite similar. And then the last thing that I've been enjoying, been enjoying watching on Netflix is Call the Midwife. I never actually watched Call the Midwife from the beginning when it first started and the last few years when new series have come out I've always th like wished that I had started watching it so when I saw that it had come on Netflix I thought right I'm going to start from the beginning and then hopefully at some point I will catch up and then keep up with like the next series I'm kind of getting there but it's taking a while but yeah, I just, I love it. It's like, I find it so interesting seeing how like midwifery was in the sort of 50s and 60s um, and how different things were, you know, just with like medicine and how much, it, it just shows you how much like medicine has evolved in not a huge amount of time. Um, and it's just nice like seeing all the stories of the different midwives and the different people that come to them it's got Miranda in it who I absolutely love um, and it's just a really good like feel good again like a Sunday afternoon slash evening like viewing um, yeah and it raises quite a lot of like important issues as well like I know certainly I haven't seen it but the last series that's come out um, I know they started talking a lot about the smear tests and like the importance of them and stuff um, and it's raised issues with sort of babies being born with like cleft palates and things like that so it's really it raises important issues but at the same time I find it quite a comforting sort of snuggle down kind of program to watch um so yeah I'm kind of I just I love watching it and I'm looking forward to kind of getting up to date so that I can kind of start keeping up with the new ones so I've got one book favorite for you this month or this current favourites and it is Cecilia Ahern How to Fall in Love. I've literally just finished this. I'm a big Cecilia Ahern fan, Ahern fan anyway. Um, I've pretty much read most of her books. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. I, I don't know what to, well, let me read a bit of the back to you because then I won't risk spoiling it for you. So it just says, Christine Rose is crossing the Hapney Bridge in Dublin late one night when she sees a stranger, Adam, poised to jump. Desperate to help, she talks him into a reckless deal. If he gives her two weeks till his 35th birthday, she'll prove life is worth living. But as the clock ticks and the two of them embark on late night escapades and romantic adventures, what Christine has really promised seems impossible. I thought it was, it was an in, like a really interesting book. Like I struggled to put it down but it also raised like quite a lot of important stuff about mental health and feeling suicidal and like all that kind of thing and it raises it in I, th I felt quite a true to form way like when you kind of read that and you think he's giving her two weeks to sort of like convince him not to kill himself you kind of worry that it's going to be like all sort of like I don't know a bit cheesy and it's going to like just turn his life around and stuff and when you kind of as you get reading through it you realize that it's not that simple um but yeah I just I really enjoyed it there were times when 
I kind of thought one thing might happen and then something different happened and yeah it was quite thought provoking but at the same time you've got the sort of like romance bit as well so it was quite like a it was an interesting mix of the two I'm really rubbish at like <laughs> explaining books but it, yeah it was kind of a mixture of like quite serious stuff and then less serious more like fun sort of romantic stuff and I thought she did really well like weaving the two together I've got one music favorite for you as well this video I keep saying this month but it's not it's this video um, and that is a lady called Philippa Hannah um, I didn't know a huge amount about her until my sister Becca told me about her um, so oh, I don't think my weekly vlog will be up yet but basically a few weeks ago at our church she came and did a concert and she's a she's a Christian musician but she does some Christian music and some non-Christian music. She has supported people like Little Mix, she's played with Stevie Wonder I think, um, all sorts of people and her concert was just, it was brilliant and I loved her message and I loved her music. Um, she focuses a lot on like self-acceptance self and mental health and like feeling good about yourself and accepting yourself for who you are and it's not in a sort of like cheesy way like she talks about her story and how she's like overcome things and a lot of her lyrics just like really sort of hit a nerve, not hit a nerve but they like I could relate to them a lot and yeah I just find her her music quite catchy and easy to sing along to but then when I thought about the lyrics I kind of thought oh like that makes a lot of sense to me and stuff so I will link her YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff so that you can check her out if you want to but yeah I am really glad that I kind of discovered her because yeah I'm really enjoying her music and kind of well I'm hoping we might see her again because she has said she'd like to come back and do another concert but it was really really brilliant concert and I would highly recommend her. And then I want to finish off with a few like Instagram, blog, YouTube favourites. So I'll start with Instagram um, and I'll try and put like a picture somewhere so that I can, I'm not just talking about nothing. <laughs> um, but my fa first favourite Instagram person at the moment is someone called Jordan. Her handle is Hello Miss Jordan and she posts just really really amazing photos. She travels quite a lot and obviously puts a lot of time and effort into her um, outfits to sort of match her surroundings and she has just taken some really beautiful photos and I just I love I just love looking through her photos because they're just they're just really really nice. They're very um, I can't think of the right word like professional um and I know some people moan about Instagram being very like highly edited and perfect and stuff um and yes it is nice to see like different you know aspects of people's lives but I really enjoy her feed um and just the you can see how much effort goes into her photos and how like be what beautiful photos they are she does also have a blog um again I'll link everything down below um but yeah, and she's a Disney fan as well. So yeah, I just, I love, love her photos and love following her. Uh, second favorite Instagram, second Instagram favorite is an account called Disney Find. And um, uh, what's her name? Roisin, I think. Um, basically is a massive, massive Disney fan. And she will just, she, finds lots of Disney things basically and takes pictures of them so she'll go to like the Disney store but also like Primark and other things and um, most of her feed is just like Disney products and all sorts of like Disney things and for someone like me who's a big Disney addict it's perfect because I love like scrolling through and seeing like what's new coming out at Dis like with Disney or with Primark or with whatever um, and yeah, I can't. I don't know what much. What I don't know what more to say about her really. But if you're a Disney fan, I would definitely recommend checking her out because 
she's just like Disney goddess I think is what I would call her. And then the last one is something that I found very very recently and it's called New Foods UK and <laughs> it's basically um, an account where the person finds new foods that are coming out in the UK and takes pictures of them and shares them so I've been scrolling through and there's been like new teas, new like ice cream and sweets and like just basically all these like yummy things that are new like in supermarkets and shops and stuff like that they post them and for me it's like a really good way of like looking at, out for like what's new because I don't get to go to the shops that often and it's quite nice to just like flick through and like look at all these like yummy foods like I looked on there today and there's like raspberry M&M, uh, raspberry Maltesers and honeycomb Maltesers and unicorn ice cream and yeah it's just I literally like go through it and my mouth's watering so um, if you're a food fan and you like sort of like new like you know fun foods that are coming out I would definitely recommend like checking them out because there's just always like cool stuff coming out on their feed. And then my last few are YouTube and blog favourites. Number one is a lady called Charlotte Ruff who has a YouTube channel. She is a, she kind of does weekly vlogs slash like daily vlogs but also a lot of Disney content and she has recently started working for Disney as well. So she stopped making YouTube videos for a while but she's come back. I was so excited to see her like first video back because I just really enjoy her content. She's very sort of down to earth and real and very relatable for me anyway. Um, and she chats about Disney, but she just chats about like, I don't know, like normal, normal life. Um, she obviously has a lot of like insight into like new Disney products and launches and things like that, which is quite exciting. And I just really enjoy her vlogs and her videos. Um, and yeah, she's a, she seems a really nice lady. Number two is Brogan Tate, and I'm sure I've spoken about Brogan before on here. Um, she does weekly vlogs, and she kind of is the person that has inspired me to start weekly vlogging. Um, I've been watching her weekly vlogs for a few years now, and I just, I really, I don't know, I think I relate to her. She's very, again, she's very sort of down to earth. She's very, relatable you know she films sort of good bits and bad bits um she's very open about sort of her feelings and how you know like her mental health and stuff um she, but yeah i don't know i just because i've enjoyed her weekly vlogs so much i kind of thought okay if i enjoy hers maybe it's something that i could do i'm not saying my vlogs are anywhere near what hers are but um yeah, I really enjoy her videos. She does vlogs, but she also does like sit down videos. She is very into Disney as well. So she does a lot of Disney videos, which I absolutely love. Um, but she does like hauls. She does um, like tips and stuff. Um, she did a really good video about like smear tests. Um, and yeah, just, I love, she does sort of travel content. Um, her boyfriend Benji is in some of her videos and he seems really nice as well. They just seem, I think I tend to like watching people on YouTube who I think if I met you in person I would like to be friends with you and Brogan's just one of those people that I think I would get on well with in person. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend her. Uh, my next YouTube favourites are the Sacconi Jolies which I'm sure pretty much everybody knows about. They're like a big YouTube family who have been daily vlogging since before any of their children were born. More recently they've switched from daily vlogging to um, doing like every other day and they've kind of changed the format up a bit and to begin with like I wasn't I was like oh no it's like changed like I like how it was but actually I really love their new format. Um, they do I don't know, they're very, again, very just sort of like everyday vlogs a lot of the time. Um, watching like filming the kids and like Jonathan and Anna like chatting and cooking and just doing, they've just bought, they recently bought a house and they've like renovated it and stuff. And 
I just, yeah, I love it. It's like when I sit down in the evening to watch YouTube, they're always the first video that I will go and watch. Um, and it's just been really, I've liked seeing, because I've been watching since before they had any children, you've kind of seen the children grow up and they've now got four children and you kind of feel like you've watched this family, well you have, you've watched this family evolve from two people to a family of six. So yeah, I really enjoy them. Um, another like family vlogger that I really enjoy is Emily Norris. She is from Canada but she lives in Essex and she's got three boys. Um, and again, she just seems very, very like down to earth, very, very friendly. I mean, I guess maybe her videos are aimed more at parents, but I still really enjoy them and I find some of her stuff quite useful for, um, obviously I'm an auntie to Noah and we look after him quite a bit. So um, I sometimes pick up tips on like activities and like even like little things, because obviously she's got three boys I tend to, I've like picked things up from her advice, like, you know, for when we're looking after Noah. Um, she does sort of vlogs, she does travel, a lot of like tips and hacks and things like that. Um, and yeah, she just like seems like a really, really lovely person and the boys seem really sweet as well. Um, and I always really enjoy her videos. Um, and then the last YouTube favourite uh, for this video is Sophie and Dave. I used to watch Sophie's, her own channel, which is Sophie Bell. Um, and then, I can't even remember how long ago it was, but she then made a second channel with her boyfriend, Dave. Um, so I now watch both the channels, but I particularly like really love Sophie and Dave. Um, and basically it's just vlogs from their life together. They've got a, um, not a golden retriever, what's it called, a Labrador called Chip, and they've just moved into a, like a new house, and Dave um, is an actor like in uh, musicals and stuff. And yeah, it just, they seem, again, seem like really lovely people, and I enjoy just seeing like what they're getting up to. They seem very relatable again, um, and again, like people that I feel like I would get on well with if I met them in person, and yeah, I just, they just seem so, so lovely and I just love watching their vlogs and seeing like them moving forward, like they, like planning their wedding and stuff. Again, they're very into Disney as well, so I always love watching out for like Disney content on their channels as well. And yeah, I just, they're lovely to watch, they, they really are, I can't think of anything else to say, but yeah. So that is everything. Those are all of my current favourites. I think this has been quite a long video. Um, this is the only problem when you kind of leave doing favourites for quite a while is you end up with like a massive video. But I hope you have enjoyed hearing a little bit about some of my favourites that I have been enjoying. I'd love to hear your comments. What kind of things are you loving at the moment? Is there anything that I've mentioned that you really like? Or is there anything that you can like recommend to me that I could maybe put on my next favourites list? Um, so yeah, do please leave me comments in the thing bit below. I can't think of what it's called, <laughs> the comments bit below. Um, and also let me know if there's any other videos that you would be interested in seeing. Um, if you would like to see more, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I really, really, really appreciate subscri uh, subscribers. Um, and I think quite a few people that watch the videos don't actually subscribe, so yeah, please do, that would be really helpful for me and make my day. Um, and yeah, I'll see you again in another video very soon. Bye!